Hello, and welcome to the second of a series of video tutorials exploring the new features of Forkinel 3. My name is Richard Harrison, author of Forkinel, and in this video I'll be guiding you through the basic process of loading, pre-treating and processing a single fork diagram. Before we start, I'll point out the three most important elements of the Forkinel user interface. Firstly, there are the three menus, Forkinel, Forkin Extras and Forkum. And these provide access to most of the key functions that are needed to run Forkinel. Secondly, there's the fork control panel, which provides a means to control automatic data pretreatment, such as drift correction, lower branch subtraction, that are applied whenever data is loaded. The control panel also provides access to key controls for smoothing and displaying fork diagrams. Lastly, there is the data browser. This contains some key data folders used internally by Forkinel, such as the fork setup and color scales data folders. Do not delete these or Forkinel will not work properly. The data browser will eventually contain a separate data folder for each of the fork data sets that you've loaded in. Please keep both the data browser and the fork control panel open at all times. If you accidentally close one, then the fork control panel can be recreated from the fork and L menu here, and the data browser can be recreated from the data menu here. Okay, let's get started. We'll load in a fork file. Uh, for this demonstration, I'll be using the cube24.txt fork data file, which can be found in the fork and L download package. To load a single data file, you can click on the Load Forks button on the Fork Control Panel. Alternatively, you can choose the Load PMC Forks from the Fork and L menu. Uh, if your data is acquired on a non-PMC system, then there's a new option to load generic fork files. But this option will be discussed in a, a separate video. So for now, I'll be focusing on just standard fork files acquired on a PMC system. When the data file is loaded, the data are displayed automatically. If you're loading multiple files and do not want the data to, to be displayed automatically, you can use the Load Forks No Display option available from the Forkum menu. When the data is loaded, whichever data pretreatment options that are clicked in the Fork Control panel will be automatically applied to the data. The first option you have is Drift Correction. To plot the drift measurements for this fork, go to the fork and L menu and choose drift measurements. You can choose to smooth the drift measurements by changing the smoothing factor on the fork control panel. Too little smoothing means that noise in the drift measurements may be added to your fork data after correction, but too much smoothing and you may start to iron out real contributions to the long-term drift of the instrument. In this case, a value of 10 provides a good compromise. The second option is first last point replace. This option removes the first and the last point on each fork curve. Due to instrumental reasons, the first and last points of each fork curve are often observed to lie off the trend defined by the other points. And this can often lead to strong artifacts in the process fork diagram. Removing these points from the smoothing process can often solve this problem. For now, we'll leave this uh, unchecked. If we zoom in to the data here, we can see the first point here is way off the trend of the other data points. And this will create a significant artifact in the processing. So we can choose now to remove that first uh, data point by clicking the checkbox here. The final pretreatment option you have is the subtract lower branch option. This makes an estimate of the lower branch of the hysteresis loop and then subtracts that lower branch from all of the fork curves. The estimate of the lower branch is obtained using locally weighted regression to fit a smooth curve through the last n forks in your measurement and the value of n can be specified here in the fork control panel. Using a larger value of n will reduce noise in the lower branch estimate. But too large a value, however, and the curve will stray too far from a good estimate of the lower branch. I recommend subtracting the lower branch routinely from all of your fork data. Doing this not only helps to eliminate many common 
processing artifacts, but it also provides a much clearer view of the magnetization changes that occur throughout the fork measurement. In this case, a value of 10 uh, works well. So I recommend that drift correction and lower branch subtraction are performed routinely on every fork diagram. Whether or not to remove the first and last point depends very much on the individual measurement. In this case, subtracting the lower branch has really highlighted the presence of a strong first and last point artifact in this data set. So for this reason, I would also recommend removing these points using the first last point replace checkbox. Now to smooth the data. Smoothing in Fork in L3 is based on Ramon Egli's variable smoothing or very fork algorithm. However, you also have the choice to restrict the very fork smoothing algorithm to a single constant smoothing factor. To choose this simpler approach, click the simple smooth checkbox before clicking the change smoothing button. You'll be asked to enter a single value for the smoothing factor. Uh, and also a, a value for the output grid factor. This is a new feature of Fork in L3, and it allows larger data sets to be processed much more quickly than before. An output factor of 1 means that the fork distribution will be calculated at the highest possible output resolution, which corresponds to the native resolution of your measurement. A factor of 2 will reduce the output resolution by a factor of 2, etc. Essentially, the higher the output factor, the lower the resolution of the output, and the quicker the fork diagram will be to calculate. And this is really important for large data sets, where you would typically use uh, a factor of 5 or 10 initially, while you explore the optimum smoothing factors, and then lower that factor down eventually to 1 to obtain your final publication-ready fork diagram. If you prefer to process your data using the full VariFork options, then uncheck the Simple Smooth box and click the Change Smoothing button. Now you can enter your VariFork smoothing parameters, an output grid factor, and a new feature which allows you to specify a vertical offset for the central ridge of the fork. Uh, for most cases, however, this offset would be left at the default value of zero. So, now you can explore different smoothing factors by clicking the Change Smoothing button. We can optimize the display parameters for your process fork diagram. More detailed descriptions of how to do that can be found in the separate videos that you'll find on the Nano Paleomagnetism website.